Hi everyone, welcome to today's higher revision video. There's 87 days to go into your GCSE maths exam, so keep up the hard work. And today we're going to focus on the topic of recurring decimals. And we're going to focus on recurring decimals to fractions. And I really like this topic. So I'm going to go through that topic. I'm going to give you some examples and I'll go through some. Then there'll be some questions for you to try yourself. And then at the end, I'll show you where the, the practice questions are. But let's get started. Okay, so today's video, we're going to look at how to write recurring decimals as fractions. So you may have encountered recurring decimals before, such as 0.33333 and so on, and you know that's a third. But let's look at how to write recurring decimals such as 0.0181818188 and so on as a fraction. So this is a recurring decimal. It carries on going 181818 and so on. We want to write that as a fraction. So whenever we're doing a question like this, we call what we start with x. So we've got x equals 0 0.0181818 and so on. And that just carries on forever. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to multiply this by either 10 or 100 or 1000 and so on. And we're going to multiply it by either 10, 100 or 1000 and so on so that we get just the recurring part after the decimal point. Now if you notice here, this zero doesn't recur. It's just a 1818181818. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 10. And that would move all the digits one column to the left. So I'm going to write 10x. So I'm going to multiply everything by 10. So 10 times x is 10x. And multiplying this by 10, we move all the digits one column to the left. So that'll be 0.181818. 1, 8, and so on. So that's fantastic. We've got a decimal number with just the recurring bit after the decimal point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to what we started with, this x equals, and we've multiplied it by 10. Now let's think of another number that we can multiply this by to get the 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8 bit after the decimal point. Now I wouldn't multiply by 100 because that would move the digits two columns to the left and that would give us 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1. I want to get 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8, 1, 8. So I'm going to go back up to here and I'm going to multiply this by 1,000. So I'm going to multiply this by 1,000. And if I multiply this by 1,000, I would get 1,000 x is equal to, and I'd move all the digits three columns to the left. So the one would move into the tenths, and then the ones of the units, and then into the tens. The eight would move into the hundredths, the tenths, and then the units of the ones. And then we'd have obviously our one eight, one eight, one eight, and so on. Now this is fantastic because we've got 10x equals 0 0.181818 and so on. We've got a 1000x equals 18.181818 and so on. If we take these numbers away from each other, so if we take the 10x away from the 1000x, what you'd find is that the bits after the decimal point would just give you 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. It would just cancel out, so you'd just be left with 0. So let's do that. So we've got our 1000x. I'm actually just going to write the 10x beneath it again. So I'm going to write the 10x directly beneath it, so 0 0.181818 and so on. So we've got 1000 x and 10x what i'm going to now do is i'm going to take these away from each other i'm going to subtract so if we had a thousand x's and we take away 10 x's that would leave us with 990 x's and then on the right hand side here we've got 18.181818 and so on and we've got then 0 0.181818 and so on and then if we take those away well we're going to get 8 to create 0 1 to create 1 0 8 to create 0 and 0 0 0 and so on and then we just be left with 18 to create 0 is equal to 18 so we get the 990x is equal to 18 now we can divide both sides of this equation by 990 to find out what x is so we can divide by remember x is what we started with so if we divide by 990 and divide by 990, we would get that x is equal to 18 divided by over 990. And that's it. So that means that x is equal to 18,990. So remember, x was what we started with, our 0 0.0181818 and so on. So it means this recurring decimal is 18,990. Now this can be cancelled down, so I'm going to take our 18. 990ths, and I'm going to cancel it down. Now I notice that both of these numbers are in the 9 times table, so I'm going to divide both of them by 9 to begin with. 18 divided by 9 is 2, and 990 divided by 9 will be 110. They're both even, so I'm going to half both of them, so that'll give us 1 over 55. So that means that 0.0181818 and so on forever is 155th, and that's class. So that's it, so we've written this recurring decimal as a fraction, and that's a useful technique to be able to do. Okay, can you now try this one yourself? Can you please now write 0.07272 and so on as a fraction? So I've asked you to write 0.0727272 and so on as a fraction. So we call this x, so we write x equals 0.0727272 and so on. We want to multiply by either a 10 or a 100 or a 1000, so we get the recurring bit after the decimal point on its own. So I'm going to multiply this by 10 to get 10x equals... 0.727272 and so on, just moving all the digits one column to the left. 
Now we're going to go back up to our x and we want to move all the digits so that we have 72.727272. So we're going to move all the digits, three columns to the left. So we're going to multiply by 1,000. So 1,000x would be equal to, and moving all the digits, three columns to the left would be 72.727272 and so on. We're then going to write the 10x beneath it. So 10x equals 0 0.727272 and so on. And then we just need to subtract these from each other. So 1000x take away 10x, that's 990x. And on the right hand side, the bits after the decimal point will all just cancel out. They'll just give us zero. So we're left with 72 take away zero is 72. So we've got the 990x equals 72. We can now just divide by 990 and divide by 990 and you'd get the x equals 72 over 990. And again, we can cancel this down. So these numbers are both divisible by nine. So we can divide the numerator by nine. That's gonna be eight. We can divide the denominator by nine. That's gonna be 110. They're both even, so let's half them both. That's gonna be equal to four over 55. And that's it, four fifty-fifths. So that means that 0 0.0727272 and so on is four fifty-fifths, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. So this time we've been asked to write 1.408 with dots above the 4 and the 8 as a fraction. So if you feel confident with writing recurring decimals as fractions, pause the video now and I give this one a shot yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to go through it in a second. Okay, so this one, we've got 1.408 with the dots above the 4 and the 8. So with these dots, it means that everything from the start to the end recurs. So this is actually 1.408, 408. 408 and so on so what it means is that the 408 are all recurring so let's call that x so x equals 1.408 408 408 and so on now what's good about this one is we've got the recurring bit after the decimal point it goes point and then we've got the 408 408 408 so that's fantastic we can actually use this x to begin with now what i want to do is i want to get another like either 10x or 100x or 1000x or 10,000x or whatever that has that 408 408 408 after the decimal point now if you have a look here i want to move all the digits one two three columns to the left because if i move all the digits three columns to the left i would have 1408.408408 Four zero eight and so on so that would be the same recurring bit after the decimal point so if we want to move all the digits three columns to the left we're going to then multiply by a thousand so that's a thousand x so we've multiplied x by a thousand to get one thousand four hundred and eight point four zero eight four zero eight four zero eight and so on now what's fantastic is we've got these two numbers which have the same recurring bit after the decimal point so i'm going to write the x equals beneath it and i'm going to write it one point four zero eight four zero eight four zero eight and so on and we're going to subtract and we're subtracting so those bits after the decimal point cancel out so a thousand x's take away one x would be 999 x equals and then we've got 1408.408408 and 1.408408408 and so on so that those bits after the decimal point will all become zero and we're left with 1408 take away one which would be 1407 so we've got 1408 take away the one will be 1407 now we want to find out what x is so we want to divide by 999 and divide by 999 so our left hand side would just be left with x and on our right hand side we'd have 1407 over 999 and that's it now let's see if we can cancel this down. So we've got 1,407 over 999. Now these numbers are not both even, they're not divisible by five or 10 and so on. But let's do a couple of other divisibility tests. This looks like it's divisible by three. 999 will be divisible by three. In terms of 1,407, let's see if it's divisible by three. So if you add the digits together and if you get a number in the three times tables, then it's divisible by three. So one plus four is equal to five plus zero is equal to five, plus seven is equal to 12. Yes, so 12 is in the three times tables. That means we can divide both of these numbers by three. So 999 divided by three would be 333. And if we divide this by three, 1407 divided by three, three into one goes zero, remainder one. Three into 14 goes four times remainder two. Three into 20 goes six times remainder two. And three into 27 goes nine times. So that'll be 469. So, divide, so canceling this down would give us 469 over three. 333.
Now, the other thing is that this is actually, it said write as a fraction, so that would be fine. If the question said write your answer as a mixed number, because obviously this is a top-heavy fraction, we'd see how many 333s go into 469. That's going to be 1. And in terms of the remainder, that would be 136. And then our denominator would still be the same, 333. So that's it. So if we were asked to write as a fraction, we could give it as 1,407 over 999. It didn't tell us to cancel it down. If you wanted to cancel it down, it would be 469 over 333. And if you're asked to give us a mixed number it'll be 1 and 136 over 333 and that's it okay let's have a look at one last question this is one that i want you to try now yourself so feel free to press pause and try this question Okay, so we're asked to write 0.524242424 and so on as a fraction. So to begin with, we're going to call this x. So x equals 0.524242424 and so on. Now we want the recurring bit after the decimal point and the 5 doesn't recur. So let's multiply this by 10. So we've got 10x equals 5.242424 and so on. So that's one number that has got the recurring bit after the decimal point. Let's find another one. So if we go back up to what we started with. If we multiply this by a thousand, we would get 524.242424, and that's got the same bit recurring after the decimal point. So let's write a thousand x. A thousand x equals 524.242424, and so on. So that's fantastic. So let's write the 10x beneath the thousand x. So we've got 10x equals. 5.242424 and so on. Now we just need to take these away from each other. So a thousand x take away 10x would be 990x. And on the right hand side, we had 524.242424 and 5.242424. Those bits that recur will all become zero. So we're left with 524 take away 5. That's going to be 519. So we've got that 990x equals 519. We can then divide by 990 and divide by 990. And when we do that, we get x is equal to 519 over 990. And again, let's see if we can cancel this down. So we've got 519 over 990. In terms of these numbers, they're not both even, so we're not going to divide both of these by 2, uh, or 5, or 10, or so on. So let's just check and see if this numerator is divisible by 3. 5 plus 1 is equal to 6, plus 9 is equal to 15. So that's fantastic. That is divisible by 3. So let's divide both of these numbers by 3. 990 divided by 3, 330. And in terms of 519, let's divide that by 3. 519 divided by 3. How many 3s go into 5? 1 remainder 2. How many 3s go into 21? 7. And how many 3s go into 9? 3. So that's 173, 330ths. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we'll focus on recurring decimals, in particular, how to convert between recurring decimals and fractions. If you do have the higher revision cards, card number 23 is going to be very useful for you. And that's on how to convert between recurring decimals and fractions. Now, remember, there's 87 days to your GCSE Maths exam. So keep up the hard work. Keep watching these videos. If you have found them useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.